Hi, I'm JT Dabbs, Scout Executive of the Greater Alabama Council Boy Scouts of America. And I'd like to share with our parents and volunteers some information about the recent flurry of media reports on the release of the ineligible volunteer file. These files cover a period of time from 1965 through 1985. These files have functioned well to help protect scouts by denying entry to potentially dangerous individuals, and scouting believes they play an important role in our comprehensive youth protection system. Now let me take a minute and tell you how these files worked. If you as a volunteer or a parent had reported to the council that a potential volunteer or a registered volunteer were suspected of doing something inappropriate or abusive, then I as scout executive would first revoke the registration if it was a registered volunteer and then submit to the Boy Scouts of America the information uh, to the registration service and that person was put on the ineligible volunteer list. And that's how it works and that's what it's intended to be used for and how it is used. It was especially important in the days before the computerized criminal background checks and those systems. It is a barrier to entry for those seeking to abuse children. This is what we know today. There is no profile of a child sexual offender, which is why we have to make sure we have the policies, procedures, and protections in place to keep our children safe. Youth are safer in scouting than in society at large. Today, we focus on effective screening, education and training, and clear policies to protect our youth. We have continuously enhanced our policies and procedures to ensure that we are in line with and where possible ahead of society's knowledge of abuse and best practices for prevention. The Boy Scouts of America requires background checks, local screening of volunteers, comprehensive training programs, and mandatory reporting of even suspected abuse. Under today's policies, any good faith suspicion of abuse must be immediately reported to law enforcement by members of scouting and our volunteers and an individual is removed from scouting as soon as a report is received. Scouting's 2 deep leadership policy requires at least two adults to be present at all scouting activities. No scout should ever be alone with a scout leader for any reason. In fact, all scouting activities are open to parents and we encourage families to enjoy scouting together. Every Boy Scout and Cub Scout handbook includes a pamphlet to help parents teach their children how to recognize, resist, and report abuse. One instance of abuse and molestation is too much, and that's why we must, we must all continue to adhere to our policies, to keep our youth protection training updated, and to do everything in our power to protect those who depend on us. Parents, we need to make sure that we continue to educate our youth and empower them with the knowledge that they need to protect themselves. Please become involved in your local unit and support our local unit leaders as they do their job to work with your young people. Youth protection begins with you.